undoubtedly one of the most asked questions on any of my platforms is how do I get started in what in something related to security right how do i get started in cyber security that's a very broad one that you should likely not be asking because we've spoken about this at length cyber security is massive you need to be specific but then further to that it's how do i get started in incident response how do i get started in threat hunting how do i get started in threat intelligence how do i get started in grc now while i have attempted to create a whole bunch of roadmaps to help you all out start into the specific journeys of course one that i myself am very familiar with is cloud security so in this video i'm going to take you through the resources that's available online for you to actually start your journey in cloud security let's get into it Hey everyone, let's become friends. I'm Venetia, your cybersecurity bestie. I make content about cybersecurity, advanced tech trends, AI, and more. So if that's what you're interested in, definitely join the community, subscribe, join all my links down below and support the channel. Today, we're going to get into the specifics of cloud security, right? This is definitely one of the biggest evolving fields right now when it comes to getting into this industry. And in reality, a lot of people are still confused about how to either start in this, what the options are, and how do you evolve your career into the cloud security space. Now, here's the thing. With cloud, there's also many different routes that you can go into the industry. You can go into a very kind of technical space, which is kind of engineering. That's where you'll have to focus on maybe deploying infrastructure, looking into infrastructure as code that's where dev sick ops comes in those types of things then there's also the other aspect of it where you can go into analysis so understanding cloud-based landscapes threats understanding how cloud-based infrastructure can be compromised etc then of course testing and assessments governance risk and compliance data protection you can be a CMO SOC analyst specifically focusing and working on cloud capabilities the list really goes on and so today in order to streamline what we're going to talk about a little bit is I'm going to share with you some of the resources that I've used along my journey of getting into cloud security and actually familiarizing myself with kind of beginner to advanced level content and topics and gaining some hands-on skills. And so, of course, with this video, we're going to focus on Azure, right? So I am a cloud security architect. I am a Microsoft MVP. If you know, you know, so I'm a Microsoft MVP. And so my focus into learning and education around cloud has predominantly dominantly been into Azure, the Azure platform topics, etc. When we talk about Azure, we're also going to talk a little bit about the security landscape holistically. And you have to think here that there are various security aspects to consider. Think about Azure as a platform that's Microsoft's cloud-based infrastructure and platform services. Then we also have the SaaS offerings like Microsoft 365, right? And so the security capabilities really span across Azure and Microsoft 365. Five. And then we have the other cloud, which is dynamic. So that's also a completely different cloud to Azure and Microsoft 365, but that hosts different types of platform services that also require security, but specifically dynamics based skills, right? So that's for D365. And then we also have the power platform, etc. For this discussion, though, I'm going to take you through a lot of the content that has helped me learn and gain skills. All right. Now from a Microsoft training perspective there's actually a whole lot of cybersecurity training available with microsoft and also outside of microsoft with mvp content with partner content on youtube etc so i have opened up a bunch of content here that i'm going to take you guys through that has helped me to understand and gain skills but a lot of this content and resources is actually for free so it's available with microsoft for free so this really is learning cloud security for free if you are are selecting Azure as your cloud provider of choice. Now, if you're selecting AWS and GCP, this video is not going to apply to you. So this is specifically for someone looking to start the journey into the Azure space. Now, the first one here, and I will link a GitHub repo down in the description for you guys with all of the links that I'm sharing here today. It just makes it easier so that I don't have to put all the links in the description, but I rather add it to my GitHub repo. And then you can go from there and you can kind of get access to all the links, right? 
So first things here is to note the Microsoft Security Academy. Now this is at microsoft.github.io. So the Security Academy hosts a whole bunch of training. So we're talking about all of the Microsoft cybersecurity capabilities like Sentinel, the SIM capability, the SIM and SOAR capability, essentially. Then we have Defender XDR, Defender for Cloud. We have Microsoft Entra, right? Entra ID, the identity capability. We have Microsoft Purview, the data protection capability. Then we have the Azure network security side of things. So think of your Azure Firewall, your WAF, your front door, etc. And then overall endpoint security. So XDR, Defender and holistic endpoint security, two different modules here. And you'll see why in a little bit. There are also other pages around getting started etc let's go through some of this content that's available here and you can see this is a quite an up-to-date repo right it gets updated very very frequently with kind of the latest data reports information product changes etc so this is something to really bookmark and keep an eye on let's have an espresso <laughs> sorry guys my voice also has been struggling these days i've been struggling if you're on my instagram and tiktok you know already the the struggle has been real from health perspective for me right now so but we're getting back into the things right let's move now from an events perspective events are really important to join because sometimes you have these virtual days and these microsoft events and then they give you 30 percent off on your next certification or exam vouchers which i mean 50 percent every time adds up and then you can essentially get certified for a lot less money but from this perspective these events are free so these are free events that you can join where you learn about these things you learn about cspm cloud security posture management right so that's the capability where you ensure that your cloud security posture is intact all the time thinking about assets with vulnerabilities infrastructure as a service assets with vulnerabilities in your cloud or platform services that's just configured insecurely maybe storage accounts not using encryption not using customer managed keys exposed to the internet, blah, 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 all those things. So that's what CSVM can give you kind of that holistic visibility of. Also events around securing your containers in the cloud. I register for these as they come up and I am one of those people <laughs> that are in these events all the time because it really is that helpful to hear kind of the Microsoft PG leads or the Microsoft CSAs share their knowledge on their experience. They do work with a lot of customers and so they learn a lot of things that can help you hands on really understanding how to use the technology's capabilities and apply it right so that's super important then it takes you through how to start so bottom line check out this repo it is linked in my repo link down below this is going to be your best friend and keep you up to date with a lot of things that's going on in the industry right now this is how you can stay connected with the blogs all right let's go ahead now this is the part that i really want to get to which is the ninja training Ninja training is so good. It groups together a bunch of resources that helps you to get to a level 4 100 a level 400 skill in the Microsoft security technology stack for free so now i wanted to describe to you the different levels that there is when it comes to microsoft skilling but i couldn't find anything but an old blog that describes it so we're gonna look at this blog it's written in 2010 but it's still applicable okay so it's old but it's there so level 100 is like what you will get with your 900 exams right so think az 900 sc 900 so this gives you kind of an introduction and you have an overview of the materials etc but you really have no expertise that covers the topic of what you're dealing with then level 200 is intermediate material so this is like when you come to maybe your i think sc 200 might be level 200 i'm not sure it might be level 200 or 300 basically this assumes that you already have kind of the basic knowledge of level 100 but you also know specific details about the specific topic level 3 is advanced material so this assumes that you already at a level 200 and you have an in-depth understanding of the features in a real world environment so you can provide detailed technical overviews you can talk about the product set features you can cover the architecture migration deployment development all those things then level 400 is your expert right so this is what the ninja training helps us to get to it helps us to get to that expert level 400 you get a badge for completing your ninja training and that immediately tells an employer that you have a level 400 skill when it comes to this and this is expert material you get expert to expert interaction and coverage of very specific and special 
specialized topics, right? So just for context, that's the different levels when it comes to Microsoft skilling, right? Let's go back here. So now the Ninja trainings are a set of organized learning modules that helps you understand a specific product. Now I've opened a few of them here. So this is the Microsoft Sentinel and Defender XDR virtual ninja landing page. It's covered by Javier. Javier is a PG lead for Microsoft Sentinel at Microsoft. I've worked with Javier a ton before. Phenomenally knowledgeable PG. So definitely look forward to learning from Javier and from Reiko when you are taking this training. So you can see the upcoming episodes. You can watch the on-demand episodes and then you can get your ninja backgrounds if you want to if you are in the nerdy zone like how i am you can definitely get that that's kind of cool yeah so then this is the upcoming episodes that you can see but in here you can also go and look at all of the episodes that there has already been and you can learn here you can look at the bonus content so this is downloading your ninja backgrounds etc and then you can look at the overall ninja training so here's where you can get access to it again but we don't need access to it if we already have access here right next we look at opening up one of of the Office 365 Ninja. Now here it tells you exactly what it covers. It tells you at which level, after each level, they offer you a knowledge check, which is super cool. It actually validates that you know what you've learned. And there's a lot of content here, a lot of content. So as we go through this, you'll see, so there's covering the email security fundamentals, intermediate security operations advanced. There's different blogs, there's different technical overviews. There's This is the part we're getting started in Office 365 itself. There's just a lot that's going on here from this perspective. And we've only looked at the email security section. Now we're looking at the deep dive into the SOC section. And then these are all the supplemental content. And then once you're done, you can request your certificate. So this is super cool because this is a certificate that you can publish onto LinkedIn. And as you're going through the training, you can document and note every skill that you've achieved on your LinkedIn profile. You can put these on your resumes as advanced skills in security operations on Microsoft Office 365 capabilities, right? So these are direct core skills that you can add. Let's look at another one. So here you can see the Defender for Cloud Apps Ninja. Then you can see becoming a Sentinel ninja this is level 400 training so remember now that is our expert level training and these are the achievements that you will get so the ninja training is just a collection of fundamentally awesome resources that teaches you so many hands-on skills if you want to see me deep dive into some of this ninja training and content real world on this channel then definitely let me know down below i am happy to deep dive with you into this content but there's a lot of ninja training to go over and you can definitely like select your area of specialties. As an example, if we go back to the first page, you can decide that you want to become a ninja in Sentinel and Defender. Then it means that these few over here might be the ninja trainings that you're looking to complete as an example. Or you can look to go into the data protection side of things. Then you may likely look at these ones, right? So there's a lot here. And even for topics that you don't understand, like if you don't understand what IoT is, the Internet of Things, you can definitely go and do the ninja training here and you can get a massive understanding of what IoT is, right? Especially something like attack surface management external. So that's your understanding an organization's external attack surface that goes hand in hand with something like your threat intelligence ninja. So those are things that you can combine together to create kind of a holistic skilling portfolio for yourself. Then we move to MCRA. So the Microsoft Cybersecurity Reference Architectures. If you need to explain in an interview how you would architect and design something or how you would deploy something or what capabilities you would use in conjunction with each other, this Cybersecurity Reference Architecture documents is absolute documents to reference. As an example, and I'm not going to go into this one in depth. Again, if you want to see a deeper video where I dive into the reference architectures, definitely let me know. But in terms of, for example, hybrid infrastructure deployments of infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and on-premise services. You should be able to know the capabilities that span across these. You should be able to know the security capabilities that you can leverage in order to secure this layer from an Azure capability perspective, right? If you're looking to become an Azure cloud security engineer, architect, or anyone that basically works in the security sphere of 
Azure. I'm going to pause there because I know this is a lot. I am going to add all of the resources and links that I added in the video. In the next video, I'm going to look into talking more specifically about Microsoft Security Copilot. I just want to scroll through it over here because we have a Copilot for Security Ninja training that has become available. This is a training that I am doing myself and there's so much to talk about when it comes to AI and security, cybersecurity, cloud security, etc. In this video, I will be discussing how Copilot for security truly, truly helps security professionals advance their skills and provide more advanced capabilities to an organization from a support perspective. Remember, AI is not here to replace a cybersecurity professional, right? I even find it funny because I started seeing these jobs that's now become available where companies are employing either freelancers or professionals to validate AI findings. So for example, if AI says to you, you need to write the this type of report based on threat hunting that you got, da, 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 you can generate the report with AI, right? But who's going to validate that? And so people don't have the time to validate the AI reports and AI information in the organization. They want to use AI, but the validation step is still taking time. So then people are actually employing administrative people now to validate AI reports, giving you kind of that added context and that added assurance that cybersecurity professionals are going nowhere. But cybersecurity professionals who know how to leverage AI will go even further. And that's where I am looking to pivot and position myself into. So if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe, stay tuned to the channel, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.